In the previous video, we have explored a way of taking two meshes, in this case a sphere and a box, and then placing the box onto every vertex of the sphere, thus cloning it to create a pattern like you see here. And I have just loaded the, the scene that we have saved in the previous video, and I'm going to continue working on it. And this time I want to complicate things a little bit and introduce a way of placing the box onto the sphere randomly as opposed to this regular vertex pattern. And also, this will be a good opportunity for me to introduce scripting and just randomization in general. So I'm going to open our plugin again, and we can see that we have a type value which is taking our mesh and using it to extract the vertex positions. And then we feed the vertex positions into our graph, and the graph and combine node here basically takes these vertex positions and they clone this box on top of every one of these vertices and then combine all of these results into one mesh, which we produce as the result of our modifier here. So in this tutorial, to randomize things, I'm going to create a new array, which is going to be an array of random positions, which I'll, then I will fit into this graph as opposed to vertex positions. So first thing I'm going to do is to create a series node which will basically create an array of uh, which will enumerate our, our polygons on our, our mesh and to do this I'm going to first I need to extract the number of polygons we have in our mesh and uh, to do this I'm going to drag out the polygons outputs and basically this produces a type value for the array node and in this type value I can now go and get the count value and the count value will tell us how many polygons there are in this array. The count value I can plug directly into the length parameter of this series node and I'm going to be incrementing by one so I get a nice 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on until the length of our polygons. In addition to this, I'm going to create something called a random series node. And the random series node basically uh, is the same as the series node, except instead of incrementing by one, for each value in the resulting array, we're just going to have a random number, in this case between zero and one. And so the length of the random random um, array is going to be the same as our enumerated polygons array. And the reason we need this random series node is to basically have a, a, a coordinate or have a value that will randomly place a position of a coordinate on top of our face and actually we will going to we're going to need two random series nodes and I will explain why in a little bit so now that we have this node set up I am going to create a new graph and this graph will basically take these parameters and take our original mesh and it will it will do its magic and then produce as a result a random coordinate on the, on the individual face specified by our enumerated series index. Now first thing I want to do in this subgraph is create something called a barycentric coordinate. And barycentric coordinate allows you to refer to three vertices within a, a triangle, be it three-dimensional or two-dimensional triangle, and then combine them together into one single vector. You can look this up on Google, but you don't really have to know what it does for this tutorial. I'm just going to paste in the code that I already have here. And there are no, no ways of creating a random barycentric coordinate yet, but I do have some C-sharp code to do this. So the most logical thing for me to do right now is to simply create a custom script which will generate a random barycentric coordinate for me. So to do this I'm just going to type script to go and create our script node and as you can see by default it has one parameter which is a floating point and it outputs another floating point and if I double click on my script the script editor pops up and in the instance path I can see that it is the subgraph and then we have the script here. By default there is a, a simple script placed in here just to get us started in some way and we can modify this as we see fit. We don't really need to concern ourselves with the namespace or the class names all we need is the, is the parameters and the output of our script at this point. So let me take my, my code which performed the barycentric coordinate creation and in fact we are going to be creating a vector 3 and we are going to be taking in two floating point parameters both of which we need to be a random number. So I'm going to have float parameter 1 and parameter 2. Because vector 3 is is located in ethere.geometry.dll assembly, I actually need to create an ex external reference to this assembly. And the way we do this is by going and the very first line of our script 
is a comment and if it's going to be a comment and if I add in the uh, name of my assembly which is ethere dot geometry dot dll and I know this because it is located in the library binary directory which we have covered a few videos ago so if I do this in this format it is actually going to go and reference or load this assembly to compile the script and if I have more than one assembly I can simply separate them separate them by space and continue adding more assemblies in here as many as I need really and also I need to add the using clause so the vector3 uh, node is located in ethere.geometry namespace and if you're not too much into scripting you don't really not need to know this but it really helps to know C-sharp to get started with this workflow so now that I have my function set up and I have my two floating point parameters I can, I'm just gonna go and copy paste the actual code here and uh, I'm going to replace some of the parameters so instead of getting a, a random double I'm gonna specify my parameter 1 and I'm going to do the same thing for parameter 2. Once I'm done this I can see that we have a little recycle or a compile icon pop up here and if I click on it it says that build was successful so there were no errors in the script. If there are errors you will get a more detailed message here at the bottom. So now if I go back I can see that my script outputs a vector3 value and it takes our two floating point parameters. So essentially this is a self-contained node which we can go later and modify and recompile and do whatever we want with it. But essentially we have just created a node from scratch. So now that I have my two parameters I can say that we want to specify them like this as an input to the graph and I'm just going to say random1 and random2 for the names of the parameters. So on top of this we will also take an index parameter so I'm going to add an index parameter which was the index into our polygon and we're also going to take the actual mesh which we are using and the mesh is going to be a polygon mesh and the index parameter is going to be an integer value. If I drag out the polygon mesh, I get the type value node for it. And now that I have a, I have a type value node for it, I can extract the polygons array. And again, the polygons array presents us with a type value for the actual array, and it has a parameter called get item. And this get item is essentially a function which allows you to specify an index inside the array, and it's going to produce you the the item or element at the specific index inside this array. And what we're interested in is the specific item at the index which we're specifying as the input for this graph and now this will be the polygon which is the which we are interested in for this particular for this particular evaluation now we can grab the output of our polygon to get the type value again for the polygon so we expose the properties of the of the polygon and it has the vertex indices so we can drag this out and these are not actual vertices, these are just indices into the vertex array of the mesh. So if I drag this out, this becomes also an array and you can see that there is a get item uh, output. And if I do this again, I will be able to get the indices into the vertex array. And I can say that this is going to be vertex 0, this is going to be vertex 1 and then I'm going to have another one for vertex 2. There really are probably four vertices in the polygon or there could be more but because we are having barycentric coordinates here we're kind of just going to ignore uh, any vertices other than the first three within the polygon. So having the first three indices inside the polygon we now can get the actual vertex positions for these three indices and to do this I'm going to drag out the vertices node of this mesh and I am also going to do the same step as we did for the polygons but this time for the vertices which means that I'm going to get item and I'm going to pipe in my index number one here this will produce a vector 3 value and I'm going to do the same thing for the other two vertices so we're extracting one vertex of the, at this index one vertex at this index and one vertex at the last index so now we have three vertices which are part of the polygon specified as the index into our graph and we also have a barycentric coordinate so to complete the the mission of this graph I just need to combine these three vertices using this barycentric coordinate and I also have a script for that so I'm going to use our script node custom script node again 
to create my, my function to do that. So essentially I have a function here which is fully formed, like this. And it's basically says from bar central coordinate, so it takes a bar central coordinate here and takes three vertices and it, then it produces one vertex based on this coordinate. I'm going to do the same step because we're dealing with vectors threes. Uh, I need to reference our ethere.geometry.dll assembly and I also need to include it into the using clause of our script. So it's going to be ethere.geometry namespace. And now I'm going to hit compile. And again, it says build successful, so we're good to go. Now the script takes the three vertices and the bare central coordinates, so I can just wire these things into the appropriate ports. And then the output of our script node is going to be wired as the output of our graph. And we're done with this graph. It is somewhat complex, but I hope you got the general idea about scripting, even though if you didn't really understand the rest of this part. The scripting is really the, the main point of this tutorial. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to wire up our series nodes. First we have our index of polygon, which I'm going to wire into index here. Then we have our two random series, uh, which provide random numbers for every item of this first series. And then we also have our source mesh input here. So the resulting output of this graph is an array of vector threes, and these are actually our positions. So I'm going to wire this into the position input of our second graph, and there is an error. And I have just remembered that I have entered something wrong here. So it should be 0, 1, and 2, and not 3, because we're using 0 based indices. So uh, we are getting vertices 0, 1, and 2, not 0, 1, and 3. So now that I have this straightened out, we get our properly randomized positions for our boxes. And if I resize, you can see that they are now indeed random. And this is the end of this tutorial.